What is going on, guys? The Steeler here back again with the weekly RDX podcast. You guys know the deal, all the latest Xbox news and more. We're going to cover it all here, and we really appreciate you guys uh, for showing up. We've got uh, a bunch of good topics as well, some pretty interesting announcements for the channel. Uh, and really, I want to start off, as always, by asking the panel members how they've been, where you guys can find them, why we let people stream in. So we'll start with Luca. How you been? Where can people find you? Hey man, I've been really good. I've just been on Twitter as per usual. You guys can find me on Twitter at the Ash and Luca. You know, I haven't been doing too much, just playing a couple games, enjoying myself. You know, shout out to everyone in the chat. It's so good to see you guys here. We uh, always love and appreciate the support, and I'm happy to be here with my brothers again. Oh yeah, we gonna talk some games today, girl. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah, all day, what you been up to? Swell. Now I've been pretty good, man. Uh, <laughs> just playing. I've been playing. Oh. Uh, Oddly, playing a uh, Stardew Valley lately, man. Um, becoming a, a natural born farmer. It's like Harvest Moon 5.0. Uh, oh yeah, for sure. It's a great game. No, I'm just playing. No, it's a good game. Be playing that. Waiting for that D2 tonight. D2. Yeah. Oh yeah, Destiny 2. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna talk about that as well. Oh, Fonzarelli, yeah. what are you up to, bro? Well, um, I'm excited for Destiny 2 as well. But the problem for me is, why does my Xbox tell me it's not ready until the 20th? What is going on with that? That has hmm. to do with the bundle. That's just the, it's the bundle thing. It's still going to be unlocked. Yeah, it better be, damn it, because I've got about a half an hour before I have to go to work, and I'm going to use that half an hour. Yeah. Every well, uh, Colt, how you been, brother? What have you been up to? Really good. Uh, playing some Xbox all weekend. Just okay. to, played some, back, played with back bunch from of, your third vasectomy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. played a bunch of Xbox, played with some of the guys in the chat, and played uh, with some time with Dealer, and had a good time. So I'm going to be doing that. A little more often. I want to get people on there talking to me while I'm shooting stuff. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like a lot of people forget how social Xbox and consoles in general are after a while not being on them. You know, so it's night and day. Yeah, dealer. Let's let's not just gloss over that. He played his fucking Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone in the chat call call Coulter. Fraud. Hallelujah. Uh, we we do gotta say Southbound ended up not being able to make it this particular episode. Particular episode. So. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, he will not be here. It's one of those things where I'm going to tag him on Twitter because his situation is a little more sporadic with his work schedule. So, of course, uh, he could not be here today, but he's here with us in spirit. And, of course, you guys already know he's getting a vasectomy. So, today I want to talk about... <laughs> Then we'll talk about Destiny 2, the hype, probably let some more people filter in. If you're joining us early, hit that like button, show your support, share this bitch on Twitter or wherever you can. And uh, really, let's talk Destiny 2. Let's talk about this Xbox Destiny bundle. What do you guys think? Are you guys excited in the chat? Are you looking forward to the game? We'll start with All Day because I know you're a Destiny fan, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's one of my favorite games of all time, especially for co-op. But um, bundling this with the console is a great idea, man, because a lot of people, even if you had it on PS4, if you're looking to get an Xbox, you know what I mean? At least they're bundling something that can take up a lot of time and be mm -hmm. a lot of fun. You know what I mean? And it's very, it's a common game. You know what I mean? It's a common, a common multiplat that a lot of people are playing. So you probably won't have any problems meeting new friends. So I think it's a good deal, man. Yeah. Fonz, I know you're looking for this too. Yeah, dude. Man, I can't wait. Destiny 2, that, that's life, man. That's life. I, I can't wait to play the game. But that's this, bad. I think this bundle here is, um, it, it's a great marketing thing to do right now. It's it's very smart of Microsoft. I have to say that. I have to give them props for that because this is the biggest game coming out right now. And probably within the next, I'd say th this fall, it's probably the biggest game. So, smart deal. Yeah. Luca, you're not really into Destiny, are you? I mean, just, get, just give it to the people straight. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not into Destiny, but, you know, it is a good bundle, so I can't deny that. <laughs> 249 yeah. for two games, including a new one that's coming out, that's great. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm sure the people who want to get Destiny are going to get it regardless. You know what I mean? This is something similar to what they did two years ago uh, when people, when Forza 6 came out, they could, they could get an Xbox and pick up some new AAA games for pretty much free, uh, as well as a controller. So, you know, that, I think it's cool. Uh, options are great, of course, and these bundles are pretty interesting, especially around the time that Destiny comes out. Colt, let's get to you before we start to get into some of the more juicy topics. Destiny 2, uh, are you going to play this thing? Uh, I have to actually save my money to get Assassin's Creed Origins and Shadow of War the same like two weeks that's kind of how it schedules in right so yeah. got to get them both and just blast through them as much as possible 
Okay, well, as Luca mentioned, there are Xbox One S bundles going on right now. Uh, 250 bucks gets you the console, and if it comes with a game already, you could potentially walk away with three AAA games with a purchase of an Xbox One S. So if you get the Madden bundle, you get Madden, or, uh, I don't know, Shadow War comes out here soon, right? And then you can pick from two other games like Destiny 2 and, and others. So this is pretty crazy. I, I like the fact they're doing this. Let us know what you think in the chat, of course. Uh, most of you guys probably have on your wait for the X. Uh, deals with gold all day. Uh, what's going on with deals with gold? We want to do this every single show. Others do it, but we feel like uh, people should know what's going on, right? So deals with gold all day. What you got for us, bro? That's a great deal. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> My mic was muted. <laughs> no, it's looking pretty, it look, honestly, we're not going to keep it 100 with you guys, man. It's looking kind of dry with the deals. I think um, Sniper Elite. The season pass is fifty percent off. Um, sh the shyness is uh, that's uh, Sniper Elite Four, right? Yeah, yes. No, 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 no. It, yeah, Sniper Elite Four. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sniper Elite Four season pass on sale. It's fifty percent off. Um, they didn't list the price, so I don't know how much it was originally. Um, but uh, what else? We got um, Pagel, Pagel Two. If you ever, you know, Pagel. I, I had a, a surprisingly fun time with that game. It's six bucks right now. So, Pagel 2, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, game. if you have EA Access, I believe it's free. I do believe. Okay. Um, yep. And The Shyness, it's a action-adventure game. Um, it's about 15 bucks right now. It Originally, it's twenty nine ninety nine. So if you guys in, want some adventuring, go ahead and pick it up. But that's mm -hmm. it for the deals with gold. New releases, of course, we talked about the mother god of them all. Destiny comes out. Tonight at nine West uh, Pacific time and uh, Eastern, it's at midnight. So, if you pretty okay. good, so if you want to preload it, today's your chance. I mean, before nine or twelve. Um, what else? Um, NASCAR, NASCAR Heat, you NASCAR Heat two. <laughs> oh, if you're not first, you're last. Jacob. Um, <laughs> so if you want to go ahead and pick that up, go ahead. Um, that's the. Um, I think. Damn. Uh, NBA Live comes out on the fifteenth. Um, if you, if you pre-order it before then, you get it for forty dollars. Hmm. So it's not that bad. The week. Yeah. So those are pretty much the only games uh, coming out here in the next week, right? Including today, you got Destiny Two, you've got NASCAR, yowdy get yowdy dog, and then you've got, <laughs> of course, uh, NBA Two K, fucking next basketball game. So not a big Two K fan myself, but well, of course, Two K is on the nineteenth. On nineteenth. Okay, nineteenth. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, of course, you know, and, and a whole flood of games coming in soon after, so not really a huge deal. Shout out to already over 200 people watching us live. Hit that like button, guys. We appreciate it. As we talk about Michael Pactor, oh, man, uh, you guys saw this interview he did here recently on his little Pactor Factor, whatever whatever it's called, where Shit, he pretty yeah. much says that anyone buying an Xbox One X um, day one is an Xbot. <laughs> I need yeah. no thoughts, Luca. Let me get well, let me get it from you. Listen, I just want to say that this dude is a goofball. Like, I just I don't take him seriously. I can't take him seriously. He's wrong more often than he's right, you know. And it's like the fact that he had to. He's like, I went to Urban Dictionary to look it up, and so I'm going to use the term X spot. I'm like, are you stupid? Like, <laughs> Michael Pactor, you can eat a dick, man. Like, fuck. You. Uh, oh, snap! Another curb stomping. Uh, all day. What do you think about this, man? Fuck him. That's why. No, nah, um, honestly, when, when he when he said um, Xbox, he kind of he didn't describe it as super disrespectful. He just kind of described it as a fanatic about Xbox. It wasn't too disrespectful, but we know what the term means. We know why it's there. We know why people say it, right? Yeah, um, he, yeah. he might, I think he's he might be a little oblivious to it. Obviously, if you have to go in Urban Dictionary to figure out what it means, you're probably not in the loop, right? No. Um, no. So you know, it is what it is. I mean, that's a common term for people who are you know. Well, I, I think ultimately, for one, we've got thicker skin than that. We're getting called fuck face right. and all this stuff every other day on Twitter. It, it's cool, right? That's, that's the way of the internet. It's not the name. It's the fact that the guy's supposed to be a professional. And, you know, no matter how many times he's wrong, he still keeps his job, whatever. It is what it is. But when you say that the only people buying an X day one, and of course in the chat, let me know if you agree. I'm sure you do. But when you say somebody's buying an X day one is an X bot just because they're supporting something day one, you're a fraud. And I don't remember the last time, I don't remember him saying that about the PS4 Pro, even though it offers less features. And that's just a fact, right? It does what it does, and it does it. But ultimately, it does offer less features for a, sli a slightly lower price. I don't remember him saying that about people who are buying the Pro. And, and th we've caught a lot of these guys in hypocrisy like that, where the X actually offers substantially more. 
it's unfortunate that he has to say this kind of stuff. Colt, what do you think about this, man? Um, well, you forgot he, the focus of him looking up the Urban Dictionary was to read it straight from the Urban Dictionary, but his focus was on the word blindly. He said that mm-hmm. an Xbox, you know, all of us that pre-ordered the Scorpio edition Xbox were basically blind fanboys who will buy anything no matter what, as long as it has the Microsoft stamp on it. And mm-hmm. I know all of us here, especially the people that are watching this podcast right now, they know exactly why they ordered the Xbox One X. It's about what it offers. It does more than just resolution. Dealer and I have been hammering that into the ground in our past videos, like all all spring and summer. That they, We know what the Xbox does. That's why we want to buy it. And I think that's kind of... I, I like Pactor. You know, I like what he you does. Wanna and, like, you uh, want to like I Pactor. Like Let's him. correct that. Yeah, yeah I want to like him. He's, he's just been a little... I know. can tell uh, Fonzarelli likes him. Funny man. <laughs> uh, you know, here's the problem I have with that, that whole thing is the fact that I'm somebody who didn't buy the Xbox One day one. I didn't want to pay $500 for that console for Kinect. I did not want to do it. I waited till the Kinect was taken out of that bundle. Then I bought the Xbox One. So I do not buy everything just based on brand. I buy what I want and I'm excited for. And I'm excited, truly excited for the power of the X. I'm sorry. People that nay say the power and everything, fuck you. Um, <laughs> power. Uh, for a console at five hundred dollars, this thing is legit. There's no reason to fucking talk shit about it. Yes, the CPU isn't that great, guys, but at the end of the day, we're going to get the best representations of our multi-plats and have some. Good- well, we actually have some news regarding CPU-related stuff in the X. Uh, as you see the title, there is a slight uh, power boost, performance boost through S- SDKs. And we're going to get to that later in the show. But, yeah, as of right now, we don't have any definitive proof that it's anything to uh, shit your pants over. So, But, you know, regardless, the GPU does take care of 98% of what you're going to notice for the most part, unless you are a frame rate whore like myself. And most people will be very satisfied with those visuals uh, nonetheless. No one else has an opinion on Pactor. What, what maybe he should do instead of trying to predict shit because he's not done very good in the past when it comes to this. Yeah, that's so true. You know, and it's not the fact... <sighs> I mean, yeah, it's the fact that he even used Xbox in the first place. Like, the way he, he said that, he said, the only early buyers are Xbox. And God bless you, Xbox. You're blindly faithful to your brand. I'm like, um, <laughs> what? Like, yeah. d- do you realize how condescending you sound? Oh, con- it's not my right, fault. that's fine. Like, it's oh. not my fault he doesn't have a 4K television. It's not my yeah, fault. Yeah, Pactor, by the way, guys in the chat, he, he's <laughs> the guy who said, nobody has a 4K TV, so... You know, once again, uh, the guy's been wrong so many times that you can't count on all your toes and, and fingers combined. And he obviously doesn't know too much about what's going on in the tech world. He doesn't know what a titty flop is or any of this cool stuff that, that we learned about on the channel together. So once you know, again, uh, you know, he, it is he, what it is. He, he's probably really cheap. He probably pours a whole bunch of ketchup packets into a, a, no. a bottle. <laughs> no, no. The, the, guy, the guy probably makes a good living, but he was bragging um, in the same breath where he was talking bad about the Xbox that they don't, you know, you need a 4K TV to enjoy this thing, so why would you do that? He said, I have eight uh, 1080p TVs in my <laughs> house, and I don't want to get a 4K TV. He's like, what? He what said he has eight 1080p eight, TVs. Yeah, eight of them. <laughs> well, one in the bathroom, you, one in the fridge. He got them all glued together, and he got an 8K TV. Right. <laughs> like, what the fuck? He has eight? Why doesn't he just sell some of them and then hard enough to get a 4K one? One for cool. every toilet. He's so full of shit. <laughs> Like, so, uh, yeah, guys, you know, it is what it is. Uh, 330 something watching already, guys. Hit that like button. We appreciate it as Woo! we go into what is ultimately our next topic here. Uh, and we've been asked to touch on this because, of course, PUBG is coming to Xbox later this year in preview. PUBG has already cracked 10 million sold. And you know, this thing is going to become even bigger in the future, especially coming to console. All day, I know you're looking forward to this game, man. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you're looking forward to when it comes to PUBG. Uh, just a sense of oh, it's going to be some very intense matches, man. That game is – I played it a few times at my buddy's house, and uh, the game's great, man. It's, it's fun. It's an experience that console guys really hasn't had, you know, maybe maybe Minecraft, uh, kind of, but nothing to this degree. I mean, you're talking about 100 players on screen, all in the same area, trying to fight each other for breadsticks. It's crazy, man. Um, I'm excited about it and happy that console players get to enjoy this game, man, for mm-hmm. Breakneck Nebula says, PUBG, baby. Yep. 
So, Amen. you know, hey, if anything, you do got a really cool big game to play this year on the console. That's one reason in it by itself to own an Xbox One. And, and you know what? It feels pretty good to be an Xbox fan right now, I got to say. Just a fan of gaming. There's so much good stuff going on. Anybody else looking forward to PUBG? All, all, day, all day made me throw up a little in my mouth when he compared PUBG <laughs> to Minecraft. Well, the, the, the survival aspect. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, but know. but I'm I'm excited for the game just because it's different for consoles. Um, I'm a console guy. I don't play on PC, so I'm not really used to games like PUBG. And so excite it's exciting to play a different genre of a shooter. You know, it's it's got different elements involved that look it, it looks fun. You know, um, there's so many people in the chat that I reckon. Indy, uh, Breakneck Nebula, <laughs> SSJ, Lethal Papa, Def Jam Bam, Fox, ah! all you guys. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Every single show. And I, I don't even give you guys candy or anything. You just do it, which is cool. So, um, <laughs> you know, you guys are awesome. We appreciate it. For I got some strawberry candy, the one your grandma used to have on the kitchen you table. Know, what we might be able to, to give them, though, is a copy of Resident Evil 7 Gold Edition. It's releasing December 12th on Xbox One and Xbox One X. This is the Game of the Year edition of the very good Resident Evil 7 that released uh, this January, this past January, right? Right. Yes. Anybody beat Resident Evil 7 in here? I'm, t I'm a pussy. I'm sorry. Same. Yeah, I'm too yeah. I'm too, I'm too scared. Seriously? Nobody? <laughs> yes. yes. Nobody? The game doesn't appeal to me at no, all. No, you're all frauds. I think, <laughs> one of the best, I think it's one of the best Resident Evil's made, especially in modern times. It feels very Western. 60 frames. I mean, it just feels really nice. And I cruised through that game almost twice. So I'm, I'm going to play. Let me ask you a question. Has all the DLC for the season pass come out already? Uh, maybe, but that's what this gold edition is. It includes all of that. And like I said, keep in mind, you are getting a patch for the X as well. You're going to be running at significantly higher resolution, at least 1440p minimum uh, on Resident Evil 7. And, it, you know, it's already a great-looking game on the regular Xbox One. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not complaining. Assassin's Creed Origins, we've got to talk about this. We've got a lot of requests to talk about Assassin's Creed Origins, running at 1080p, 60 frames per second. Now, of course, this comes to to us thanks to, well, D-Batch. He was on last week's episode. He went to, I think, um, some kind of fan event in Canada uh, last week and played Assassin's Creed Origin, Forza Motorsport 7, all running on the X. He talked to the developer at the booth, and they told him that Assassin's Creed Origin is supposed to have a 1080p, 60 frames per second mode. Holy shit, if this is true. I he mean, also said, don't mention my name, which is very interesting. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know where that leads you guys after that, but go That's ahead. Probably after D, him and D got done in the back alley. You never know. So, <laughs> you know, shout out to D-Batch. D is a cool guy. We've been working oh, with yeah. him forever. Uh, so, it, whether or not this is true, this is interesting because I believe that this guy told D this. D hasn't ever just said, well, this source told me this. And, uh, you know, he's never done this. He's never said, oh, a random guy told me something, and, and he told me not to tell you his name. So I think that this guy actually did tell D this, and I think that Ubisoft neither confirming nor denying this speaks volumes. Um, thoughts? All day, I know you're a frame rate whore like myself. Yeah, all right, good, good, good one, okay. all day. Um, I'm well, okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, thanks, guys. I, I, mean, I, I think it's gonna be great, guys. You know, <laughs> 60 frames per second. You know, you, you know, you guys can't compete with that. You know, it's gonna be good. You know, 60 frames per second is gonna be very smooth, very fluid. Yeah, it's gonna be great, guys. Holy crap! That sounds just <laughs> like it. Jeez. <laughs> Hear me now. All right, Luca. What about you? Uh, if this is true, it's great because, uh, like I said, I'll always take frames over visuals and resolution any day that's but that's just me that's just my opinion on it like if it's true i will definitely be playing this game in that mode uh cole i already know your answer bud yeah i, I think it's good it, it actually cements my idea you know when i have to decide what i'm going to buy a game on pc or xbox uh this is like a no-brainer on the xbox mm -hmm. yeah it's 1080 just, 60 yeah yeah 1080 60 you know and of course uh, yeah it's kind of weird to the way the games run 30 frames on PC aren't always the desirable in my opinion. So I just think this is, I think this is a big thing because we can't, <laughs> you can't name a game that runs at uh, 1080 60 open world, a big triple a game like this on console. This is uh, a new precedent that could be set. This is, this is something we haven't seen on a big mm -hmm. game. Now, now well, do, you guys, do you guys think that by having this game run 1080 P 60 frames a second, do you guys think more developers will kind of get the itch like they want to do it too, have a mode in there for that? 
That's what I'm saying. I, that's what I'm hoping it sets precedence. Yeah, hopefully. I'm really it, hoping so. I, th- I think, though, that uh, in, in, options are always good, but at the same time, like I don't want a game that's uh, – going to have big huge frame dips here and there so hopefully it's not just an unlocked frame mode and it's actually a locked 60 um, that would be awesome because we've had games like saints row 4 that's that's tried to hit that 60 and it did a good job i guess but from time to time you would get those big frame dips yeah well you know i know we all love frames but but nebula in the chat he really loves frames he's he's talking about selling dogs selling for dogs. frames and other <laughs> other questionable activities so shout out to you uh and of course we all hope for that mode you know of what? course that, that mode at 1080p at 60 should be at the same graphical settings as the high resolution mode so for dealer. those wondering dealer i got a question for you though because i don't want to uh, go past this before we get this out of the way but some people out there have questions about uh, these different game engines and stuff, okay? Because we've got open world games like Destiny 2 that claim they can't do uh, 60 frames on consoles. And then you have Assassin's Creed who potentially will hit that target. Um, I was trying to explain that they're totally different games, totally different engines by two totally different companies. Therefore, there can be variables there. So one may have a harder time with the CPU currently in the consoles, while the other one may not um mm-hmm. can you expand a little bit on this i agree but i would actually swap that around historically on pc ubisoft games have been super pc hungry whereas activision engines are old and antiquated they generally have always run at 60 when it comes to call of duty and things like that you know uh overwatch is made by blizzard who's owned by activision they're generally running their engines at 60 and they tend to be less demanding on pc whereas ubisoft games especially assassin's creed origins is going to be a hog on the PC. So if they can do this with, with Origins, um, it, it is something to take notice of. And more importantly, uh, keep in mind that if they hold the 60, if it's not a variable frame rate, then it's going to be even cooler. So basically, I would imagine they could do it out in the desert, you know, out and about, just roaming around. There's not too much going on when it comes to the CPU. But when they go into the populated cities... That's where I would be like, wow, okay, they're keeping this frame rate with all this AI and all this simulation. I mean, they, they've yeah. talked about the simulation in Assassin's Creed several times where people that work, people, they, they go to work, they, they do what they do, they go hunting, they have families, all that stuff simulated. And that's all CPU draws right there. So It's like when we were playing The Witcher 3, you know, when you're out and about, it, it would hold a steadier frame rate than when you go into the big cities and stuff. Uh-huh. That's exactly. what you're saying. So, so yeah, but yeah. the... A lot of people I, I, I know I, I've you know been talking to somebody in particular on Twitter and he's here in the chat. Shout out to Nate. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you know, I don't know uh, the ins and outs of all the PC tech. So I'd rather have somebody that does know like you, dealer, explain a little bit. So thank you for explaining that. No problem at all. And, and that's the kind of stuff I enjoy. And the people that subscribe to me probably enjoy that talk as well. So is, is it going to happen? I feel like we're going to know sooner than later. And actually, like I said, once again, we've got updates on the SDK with Xbox One where potentially they could be doing this. And I'll elaborate more uh, on that as well. So, of course, we're all uh, into this stuff. Shout out to over 400 people watching live. Hit that like button Woo! if you happen to give a fuck. We appreciate it. And... I want to borrow three minutes of your time to make an announcement. Uh, I've decided to do something that I've been thinking about for a little bit. Uh, I've gotten a few requests, and I said, hey, fuck it. I'm going to do it, Uh, and that is make a Patreon. So, of course, as cringy as that sounds, that link is in the description. If you got a buck and you happen to give a fuck, feel free to become a Patreon. Tons of good, uh, well, hey, incentives down there. So anything from uh, game giveaways joining the podcast uh, for an episode and more down there. Also good stuff for creators as well. So if you want to get out there, get more exposure, I can help you there as well. I'm just putting stuff in the Patreon that I feel like I can do for people uh, and kind of offer a service in return for your support on YouTube, especially over the past year or two. So once again, that's all I got to say on it. If you think you might want to contribute, please give it a, give it a gander. Give it a gander. So, yeah, that's, that's the end of that. I want to move on to, uh, well, hey, Cuphead. Let's talk about this journalist. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Luca, I want you to lead on this one. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so, yeah, I saw we all saw the gameplay. It was bad. Like, it was pretty bad, guys. Like, I was cringing the entire time. Like, uh. listen, you have to be at least competent to write about these games. Like, how can you properly review it if you don't know what the fuck you're doing? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Does that make sense to you guys? 
Like, what was... Bruh. I was like, I've never felt so embarrassed before in my entire life. Well, except for when that one dude was trying to play Doom and he failed miserably as well. So there's that. Like, I just felt bad. And then I felt embarrassed. And I was just like, see, this is this is a reason why I don't look at these sites for these reviews because, like, they have stuff like this. Who, who knows how many yeah. other journalists who don't who, who actually was the know journalist how to play? And what website was he from? It was well, it was Dean Takahashi from Games Beat. Hmm. Okay, the fuck is Games Beat. Anyway, um, okay. It's, no, I it's, think it was Venture yeah, Beat. Wasn't it, it? Well, Venture it's beat. It's, the, it's Venture Beat, but it's it's Games Beat is their gaming section or whatever. Division. Uh, so what I don't get, those of us that run a YouTube channel, I don't understand why he just didn't edit the first like eight minutes of his <laughs> embarrassment. Before, like, if I was a journalist like him, and my job was to bring content to an audience, and they let me play Cuphead, I would say, oh, you know, I was, I was dicking around there. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm gonna go ahead and just upload the, you know, the last 20 minutes and leave out the first eight minutes of me fumbling around with uh, my blindfolded with no thumbs. <laughs> you know what it reminded me of? Honestly, <laughs> this is what it re- reminded me of. You know, all of you out there, I'm sure you have kid brothers or sisters. You know, I have kids. Uh, when I give my my toddler daughter sometimes my three-year-old <laughs> daughter my controller and she'll just hit that jump button over and over that's what it looked like it was so maddening to watch and i as i was watching this because i first saw it on randall thor's channel shout out to rand um and i was watching this gameplay i literally wanted to reach my hands through that screen slap the guy take the <laughs> controller away and just do it for him because it was a- <laughs> you can actually read right there it said jump and dash jump and dash and i'm yelling at my screen jump and fucking dash already you know you did a video on this where you you literally compiled the footage and and kind of made a skit out of it so if you, if you guys haven't checked that out go to go to fonz release what? channel and check that yeah, out after you, this video. You, but here's you, the thing, that, that little skit i did with the guy getting frustrated and pissed off i was getting that mad <laughs> if i had all the money in the world and i didn't care about my shit i'd be breaking my tv over that <laughs> fun <laughs> hey listen <laughs> honestly like you guys are not like this is a positive thing bro it really is. It could be a positive outlook on things. Like if 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 journalists, like the the owners and the company, checks looks at this, bro, they might want to start checking their credentials of uh, their reviewers, man. Like honestly, because yeah. this shows me that you're not you're not even capable of fucking jumping and dashing. You're not even capable of turning your TV on, is what it looked like. That, that well, I mean, I th- all they right. all that matters is that they know how to write properly. It sounds exactly, good, you know, exactly. which is unfortunate because it's like if you don't know how to play these games and you don't have a proper appreciation for it, how can you possibly write about it? It doesn't make yeah, sense that, to me. And, and you know what? He's the type of guy that's Cuphead sucks. You know, <laughs> well, you can't even play it. That is definitely not the type of message you want to put out there for your uh, magazine or whatever, your your online site. You no. don't want to put out that our journalist here is going to review this game, but he's going to suck at it big time. And then what's that going to do? Is he going to give it a bad review and say it was just hard to control? I mean, geez. Like, that's, people- like, uh, that's like if I was watching somebody play like Uncharted Lost Legacy and, and they couldn't look around or they didn't know how to aim or they couldn't jump and climb or, or do the parkour stuff. It would make the game look really bad and same for the people that did that to Crackdown. Yep. You don't want to watch somebody suck at a game. Like if my Forza footage, which people know me for, what well, really sucked, it would be a lot less intriguing of a video, in my opinion. You know, you want to be, you want to play games you're good at, especially if you're going to record them. So I don't, I don't understand what the guy was up to. He's been doing this for 25 years, they said. Oh God! And this was like an old school style game where, where he, you think he used to it, like Contra and all these other type of games like that, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I'm not really sure what that was all about. Anybody else got an opinion? Want to take a, take a dump on this guy real quick? I mean, I know the chat is. <laughs> <laughs> He really needs to go try to see if he can apply for the FBI, bro. They need like a nice mole like him, fucking fraud. <laughs> oh man, how, how, yeah. how'd you slither your way into journalism without knowing how to play video games? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, that's- yeah. Oh, hang on. I did want to say one thing. This same guy was the guy that reviewed Mass Effect One. He gave it one out of ten because he said the game was hard, too hard. It was all this other stuff during his gameplay footage of the review. Uh, people pointed out the fact that he forgot to level up his character the whole game. Oh, he didn't level up his character. Find, where'd you find that? No, he he made a, he made an apology about it. He apologized for it publicly. This is this oh, is serious. Gosh. That that really happened. Yes, he played That's Mass Effect suspect. One, gave it a one, 
And then <laughs> people okay. found out he didn't know how to level up his character. <laughs> All right. Um, somebody, you know, uh, support the Patreon so you can buy me a plane ticket to remove this guy's gamer card. <laughs> I will do it personally. Personally. You know what's sad is somebody like him gets front row seats, early access to devs and these publishers and gets to play a game before any of us ever get our hands on it. And the guy doesn't even have thumbs. It's ridiculous. That's kind of sad. Yeah, and, and even worse, I think it was Luca that pointed this out. Why put this kind of footage up? You know, why do it? Yeah. He also tried to defend it in the comment section, you know, that, you know, it's, you just can't do it. It's impossible. Um, what's not impossible, though, is to get Luca to uh, talk about some Life is Strange. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm so excited. So uh, Life is Strange is an episodic game, and they just came out with uh, the prequel to the original game called Life is Strange uh, Before the Storm. It follows um, the main characters from Life is Strange Best Friend, and I've been playing it. Uh, I played it this weekend, and it really, really affected me, and I was just wondering if uh, anyone else on the panel was considering picking it up. I mean, I know all day was talking about playing it and then dumping it to play Destiny 2, so, you know. Just- <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak on that. I'll speak on that. Um, I got Life is Strange for six bucks here recently, the whole first season. And then I played it, and I made it about halfway through the first episode before I died of the cringe in the dialogue. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry. I couldn't yeah. do it. It's just, I can't wait to yeah, boot up this bad boy. Look at this plasma. Like, what are you selling, <laughs> lady? Like, stop it. So, yeah, I just couldn't get through the dialogue, honestly. I really do like games like Firewatch and, and Edith Finch, and I, I enjoy those types of games, but the dialogue was so cringy. I like the, the the style in terms of uh, the music and how they played that. Uh, the mechanics seemed interesting. It definitely looks better than Fire, Firewatch, uh, and, and it runs well. I'll say that the production value was pretty good, better than I thought, but ultimately uh, I just couldn't get through that dialogue. It was so cringy. Either yeah. yeah, and that's under... Uh, that's gonna... understandable. <laughs> oh, God that's damn it! Everybody hate yeah. each other. Boom, boom. Uh, that's Woo. that's understandable, but they like kind of um, chill out a bit with that on the second episode, and I really think that the story is worth it overall because as cringy as it may come off, the story is very deep and impactful, and I think it's worth a try. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I felt I felt the same way about Edith, Edith Finch. That was a great game as well. You mentioned that uh, dealer, so I had Edith to- Finch was phenomenal. And then the chat in the chat, uh, I've been trying to get Fonz to get inside for a while. Tell Fonz to get inside so he'll get inside. And also hit that like button. We got almost 450 Aww. people watching. We appreciate the support, guys. Luca, basically, you're enjoying the second Life is Strange uh, or the prequel, rather. Yes, yes, I am. I'm enjoying I'm it playing- quite a bit. I'm playing the. Uh, I'm on the second episode. And I'm enjoying. It. I mean, the dialogue is a little cringy. I kind of twitch a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, Biatch, where are you going? <laughs> where are you going, yo?" <laughs> you know, it, it, it's good though. I mean, the story is intriguing. The the, the you know the, the supernatural aspect of it's cool. I think it's just gonna get better, man. It's a good series, man. Yeah, episode four is pretty much. Uh, it changed my life basically and i know that sounds like dramatic and stuff but i've never been that deeply affected by a video game before really look let me ask you a question um so, did when you bought it was it all together all five episodes or did you buy like you know when the first one came out for the first season all right so when i first played it uh three episodes were already out so i bought the first episode loved it and i just bought the season pass and so how, I got how the frequent do they come out every month or uh, so I'm not sure when the next two episodes are going to come out because for the prequel, there's only uh, three episodes. So, uh, yeah, that's right. They only, they, they do only have three episodes. I'm waiting for, uh, episode two of season two of the telltale Batman game. Well, yeah, I know you've been really into that. So yeah. I, I, I curb stomped the first one. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Even though the performance isn't where it should be. Uh, the second one, the, the first episode was even more intriguing. So if you haven't checked that out, The Enemy Within, I think it's called, uh, that's pretty good as well. So uh, I'm going to get back on topic here before we uh, die of old age. Microsoft reconfirmed 4K game DVR capture on Xbox One X. Of course, it does support HDR. I just want to put that out there. Not really too much uh, opinion when it comes to this. It's just they, they just reconfirmed it. They haven't said much about it since the thing has been revealed, and it is still coming. So... Look forward to up to 4K60 game capture with HDR capabilities as well. 
Uh, and really, I wanted to talk about this Xbox One X patch. Pretty big update, uh, according to a new SK, uh, SDK software development kit. They're getting more out of this thing. They've just unlocked that additional gigabyte of RAM for developers. Uh, Ubisoft is one of the most recent ones to talk about that with Assassin's Creed Origins. They have a new Assassin's Creed Origins build at Gamescom, and apparently it might use some of this stuff in here. So I'll just start from the top. Uh, Microsoft have made it possible to optimize for the Xbox One X S while optimizing for the X as well, meaning, hey, cut the workload in half, tune for two platforms instead of one. Like we've said in the past, the dev kits are one and the same. So if they have an X dev kit, it is an S dev kit and vice versa. So that's good stuff. Makes things easy. I think it's one of the biggest advantages Xbox has over the Pro right now. Uh, gifting and wish lists are coming soon. So if you guys know I reported the, on that in a, a while ago, you are going to be able to buy a game and just gift it to someone like you can on Steam. This is really cool. Yeah. I mean, any thoughts on that? I don't know if you guys knew about that. Yeah, no. we know. Yeah, I knew about that. That's how I'm going to give Colt some games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Colt, Colt needs some games. He's a fraud. <laughs> uh, you got mouse and keyboard support coming soon. I know I'm kind of I'm torn on this. <sighs> I understand exactly why people don't want this. But I do understand why others do. Just keep in mind that no matter what happens, they should have a filter option to keep keyboard and mouse guys out of controller lobbies right. and maybe even vice versa. Yeah, so yeah, that's very true. And I need to say something about that because I had a guy basically call me a, a, a fake ass gamer today because I could. Almost, that's, that's pretty much true. Go ahead. Well, that's yeah. a good ass cheeks are fake, Fonzarelli, and you know it. <laughs> no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's it's because I said on Zaire's video that talked about this. I said. You know, I don't want mouse and keyboard support because I've played on the PC before, tried to use controller against those using mouse and keyboard on shooters, and it just does not work. And he says, no, you just suck. And mind you, said that? Is, this guy is a console guy, and he's he plays on console, and he plays with a controller, and he says that he'll compete against guys with mouse and keyboard because the support is already there through third-party adapters. Hang on, hang on. Who, who said that? Uh, some I don't know random guy. He, so he, he's definitely wrong. I mean, if you think you're competing with the best mouse and keyboard players with a controller, you're not in a good lobby. Yeah, you're and not, no, not it's not just that. He's saying that he thinks he is because the support's already there through third party adapters, which is true. It is true. You can't, yeah, you can't play mouse and keyboard on PS4 and Xbox now. But mm -hmm. the point is, not a lot of people are buying those third party adapters. Not a lot of people are playing on mouse and keyboard on, on the consoles. So you have no idea what you're wanting with this. If you do want this option, guys, I'm telling you, you're going to get your asses handed to you by well, guys. On, De devs know that if they, if lobbies start to get just poisoned with people getting killed by mouse aimers, they, it'll kill their multiplayer game and it could start ruining the livelihood of their game. So I'm pretty sure that since devs are get, be, being told by Microsoft to keep that in mind, that they're gonna they're going to make sure that there is a separate lobby to keep those people separated. Yeah. You know because you can't afford, you know, a game that it that survives has longevity by a multiplayer mode. It can't afford to get killed by that sort of problem. So I think that's a support we're gonna see. But Especially I'm, lawbreakers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I'm actually looking forward to, and I don't know if, if this would be a popular opinion. But I'd actually like Microsoft to just go ahead and with the mouse and keyboard support to bring PC ports straight to the Xbox and controller be damned if that game isn't supported on controller because of its interface and what it takes like RTS games. Just put it on there anyway and do what Steam and all these other um, PC games do. Put a icon on the game when you buy it that says this game does not have or this game is keyboard support only. And so if you want to buy that game, you have to keep that in mind when mouse and keyboard support it comes to the Xbox platform and then just allow Microsoft to dump a bunch of really cool PC games onto their library and bring that number up and bring more games to gamers. Yeah, I think that's a good I, idea. I agree with you 110%. Yeah, I, I really do. I, I would like the option. The option is fine, but the games do need to allocate different rooms for mm -hmm. the mouse and keyboard players. And right. If you want to play with them? Go ahead, test your luck with the controller. But I'm telling you now, you're going to get your ass. Hey, if you, if you want to play with with keyboard and mouse, just uh, stick to your PC, bro. Yeah. Understand yeah. the 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 appeal of it. I mean, what is this web TV back in 2001? Like, no, no, I, mean, no. Yeah, well, I, okay. I don't understand. I, I I think it's great to have the option because there Why? are games like. It, 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 
Explain to because me. Because there are games like RTSs, RPGs, uh -huh. that would benefit from mouse and keyboard. I would even use mouse and keyboard in that, you know, with those games. But how, how many of the games of those do we have besides Halo Wars 2 and what else? City Skyline. I think one of his points is it would enable other games to come over a little more easier. Yep, yep. I agree. Yeah, maybe, maybe. It'd be fine, but if it's an online competitive shooter, just have those rooms set up. That's uh -huh. Yeah, like yeah, it, and, and it, it makes sense for, points, for you know? yeah, it makes sense for like Path to Exile. You know, people are used to keyboard and mouse with Diablo style games. I get it. I just to me, it just doesn't have any appeal. That's just me. Yeah, yeah. me personally, I think instead, I understand why they don't just go, okay, we brought mouse and keyboard over, get eight people extra on Age of Empires Definitive Edition. You know, it's it's not really um, that practical. So ultimately, what they need to do is make sure every game on the console supports a controller. That's the bottom line. It is a console. It needs to support the standard controller because there are a lot of people that buy games and do not read the description that says mouse and keyboard only. That'll never happen on an Xbox, right? But but something like Definitive Edition for Age of Empires, really popular game. You guys saw the, the numbers at Gamescom. Uh, that, that can use a controller. I understand it's easier with a mouse and keyboard. I'm an RD, RTS fanatic myself, but as an Xbox fan, as an RTS fan, that game needs to come over, and it can be done with a controller. I've seen more complicated games done with a controller. So any other opinions on mouse and keyboard? They will separate us from controller guys, from, from mouse and keyboard guys. I don't think you have too much to worry about there. Luca, thoughts on this at all? People want to hear you talk. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really care. Um about it to be perfectly honest it doesn't bother me i know a lot of people are upset about it but it's not something that is going to affect me i don't play competitive multiplayer like that so gotcha yeah you're definitely but, a story person huh yeah i'm definitely a story person but you know xbox is all about options there's nothing wrong with having options guys just try to keep that in mind it may not be for you but you're not the same as everyone else someone else might want to use it you know yeah, and you know what else uh, might not be for you is crossplay, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be a thing if it can be. So uh, Microsoft are still working uh, to obtain crossplay compatibility with more partners as well, Steam, Sony, Nintendo, of course. They're trying to expand these things through Xbox Live. And, of course, that's going to be one of the biggest uh, bottlenecks there is, is other companies might not want to go through Xbox Live because they have their own services and whatnot. You know, it is what it is. You're going to have problems there. Shout out to almost 500 people watching live. Please hit that like button. We appreciate the support as we go into the software development kit part of the Xbox One X uh, update. Uh, basically, Xbox One X devs are now given the option to prioritize between uh, resolution and frame rate. This is huge. So this is kind of a performance boost. I'm guessing much like... Um, maintenance mode or other modes on an Xbox One X dev kit where maintenance mode, DX11 is only available in maintenance mode, for instance. Uh, the default render on X1X one X is DX12. Uh, before you actually boot up or you select a mode, they'll probably have an option. You select, hey, do you want to do you want to prioritize for frame rate or do you want to prioritize for resolution or other effects? And those looking to get 60 frames per second can look at it as kind of like a little game mode to help them get there or something like that. That's the best way I can explain it. This is really cool, and this may be what's going on with Assassin's Creed Origins, which I just can't get over this game. Every time I see it, it looks better. Yes. I know, once again, we just covered 60 frames, but this is kind of big. They, they added this into their SDK, the ability to basically select prioritization for frame rate or resolution. Go ahead, Cole. I know you have oh. something to say. No, I didn't. I, you just got me thinking about Assassin's Creed when you're talking about <laughs> the, the benefits it has. This game's going to be huge. This game's going to have so much cool stuff. And just think about how dang good that thing's going to look on the X. It's yeah, awesome. absolutely insane. So and It's just cool to see them. They're, the Xbox X, the X has done so much and put out so much for the developers so that they can do what they need to do. And we've seen that over and over. There's been so many articles, hasn't there? the past mm -hmm. couple months about how devs yeah. are just so pleased with the tools they've been given to bring their games the way they want them to look. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, I think that, you know, I am excited to play games in 4k, like, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, I will give the edge to frame rate. I mean, if I do have a op developers make it available to me to choose, you know, I'll probably dabble in both, but, um, I'll probably settle with, with with a higher frame rate. I think that's everyone here, you know. And just yeah. because we encourage uh, better visuals does not mean that it's a flip. It's never been a flip flop. It's always been frame rate yeah. is king, and you can go back years and, and see that right on the channel. Frame rate is king, and then you scale up the graphics effects, and then resolution. You guys are quoting me now in your heads. You've heard me say this. So. Yes. 
I actually want to quote you again, dealer. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you said a couple weeks ago, you said um, games like Uncharted 4 uh, were at 30 frames per second. It didn't stop us from enjoying, you know, massive games that we played on the on the Xbox and the PS4 and the PS3 and stuff. Like we played Red Dead Redemption at 30 frames and none of us were complaining about that we couldn't have it at 60. A great game is a great game. and 60 frames, of course, and better visuals will make better. that great game even better. But, of course, it didn't stop me from enjoying The Witcher on Xbox One. It didn't stop me from enjoying yeah. uh, all these other games like Mass Effect or Fallout or whatever. You know, it just it doesn't. Uncharted was great at 30 frames, in my opinion. Uh, you know, if it's locked, especially like Forza Horizon 3, you know, yeah. it's hard to even let that get in your way on console, to be honest. Now, so, you know, you've played uh, Horizon 3 on PC as well as Xbox. Yeah. So I've played it at 60 frames on my PC, and then I've gone over and played it at 30 on Xbox. And the weird thing is when I play it at 30 on PC, it just isn't as smooth. But it's when I play it on locked. Xbox. It, yeah, it's not locked. It's just, it's a bit, it's a different experience. So let's talk about this piece of shit 900p hunting game that's 900p. Jeez. <laughs> on oh, uh, 900p on Xbox oh One X. God. Yes, you heard me right. There is a hunting game that's 900p on Xbox One X, and people are freaking out like, how could this be? Because it isn't getting patched for the Xbox One X. I said this on Twitter. If you play this hunting game, as the dev confirmed, you can play it at 900p on the Xbox One X. That's because it's running at base Xbox One specifications. The base Xbox One version runs at 900p as well because you're playing the base Xbox One version on Xbox One X. If that game ever got a patch, of course, it would be running substantially higher and better. You know, people freaked out over this. People trying to use this as AMO thoughts. Hey, hey, hey dealer. Hey. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no one's buying Look, this. Look, there's better hunting games on a tablet. Mm. We don't care. This is not 2001 where Cabela's was taking the world by storm. We're putting out a game every two months. You understand what I'm telling you? There's nothing exciting about shooting a fucking deer in the heart, the leg, the balls. We did that 10 years ago. Who gives a fuck? Pick 900p place. makes you a better hunter, though. Yeah, because you really got you got you really got to find that that blended in fucking porcupine in the bushes. It, it takes a little longer, you know. So. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm going to boycott the Xbox One because I can't do uh, have my 1080p beer. <laughs> you were struggling with the accent. You're like, uh. <laughs> Better give me them 1080p deer. Yeah. <laughs> so, whatever. Yeah, the game's not getting patched. Like a box. The game's not getting patched. That's why it's 900p. Trust me, there's no game in the world wait, wait, right wait, now wait, that would have to run at 900p on the X. Isn't the game what? called Hunting? Like some generic called Hunting shit? at 900p on the Xbox One. So <laughs> next, next yep. thing you know, they're gonna take our Second Amendment too. We give we better boycott that Xbox. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's I'm not just, let's not. I take don't it understand there. why people are so upset. Like no one was gonna play this anyway. Like uh, I mean, it's not that people are really upset. They were just confused. Uh, the, the developer wasn't exactly clear. Oh, it's not getting a patch for the X. You're just playing the Xbox One base version. And then you know, of course, the Sony fanboys. They're, they're the worst. At this they take it and run with it so let's move on to, to dead rising 4 um coming to the ps4 of course it's a it's a big giant news slash no it's not it was confirmed a year ago to come to ps4 in about a year so dead rising 4 is supposed to come to the ps4 luke i know you had some things to say about this what do you think well i mean <laughs> okay like yeah i it's you know what i feel like i'm confused on the daily when it comes to a lot of the stuff that people react to Mm -hmm. And by I mean react, I mean overreact. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, Xbox fans saying, "How could they? They never promised that it was going to be an exclu. Uh, they never promised that it was going to go uh, over to the PlayStation. All this stuff, right?" And I'm like, "Okay, but like, there's articles saying that it was a one-year console exclusive. What? I don't understand why you're upset. Like, why? Yeah. They 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 told us this was going to happen. So why?" Are you getting so bent out of shape about this? Like Nebula he, says it well. He says it was never actually an exclusive, and he's right. It was never – like you said, Capcom confirmed it as a timed time to deal. It would be exclusive on Xbox for a year. So it was always coming to PlayStation. A lot of people yeah. freaking out about this, but most exactly. people already knew about this. And who cares yeah. anyway? You know, congratulations, Sony. You've got a shitty game. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really it's really not that big of a deal to me, uh, especially if we knew it was gonna happen. Like, if you know this is gonna happen, then how can you even get upset about it? Like, I I just genuinely do not understand the mindset of some people. I like that freak game. out over every little thing. You know, like anything yeah. that happens, they just 
go crazy and get super Blood upset. Up yeah. And I'm just like, can you calm down? It's really not that big of a deal. Do you know what you happens? Know? They get up, they get up, and they check their phone. They're like, mm, not much going on on Twitter today. <laughs> you know, time to time to do some weird dumb shit. So, you know, so. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I like, it, it is what it is. We all knew Colt likes the game. No, what do you think about? I really like before? it. I, in fact, you really I got, explain your fraudness. I got, I got about well, halfway through. I got like to almost a level thirty. I, like, I got past the tutorial. It was great. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many. I think I got probably twenty, twenty-five hours into it. I leveled up quite a ways. I had all these really cool weapons on Steam, on PC, and now the game won't even play. It locks up after five minutes. I tried uninstalling it, reinstalling it. I would love to finish it. So if you have a PS4, uh, buy it this holiday. It's it's a it's a fun game. Yeah, it's Sim, all like Sim says he likes Dead Rising three better. So I mean that oh. didn't have co op in the campaign. Colt, how could you have any problems on PC? There is no problem <laughs> on PC with gaming. There I'm actually no seriously. <laughs> yeah, all joking aside, I'm really unlucky when it comes to what, what graphics card do you have? A, a 1050 Ti or? <laughs> no, I've got a 1070. Oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's kind of it's too bad. But that's just one of those things. He gets the job done. Colt, somebody gave you a new name, Colt Fraudwood. Yep. yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the game had its fans. I'm not going to shit on You know, people like what they like. Some people like the 900p hunting game. So, you know, <laughs> each their own. That's all I'm saying. So uh, give us uh, some questions, Fraudarelli. Yeah, we got one here from Rotisserie Jones. He wants wow. to talk about monitors. Now, he prefers to play on monitors, and he wants to know, is the Xbox One X going to support monitors? Like this one in particular, <clears throat> he's talking about an Acer 35-inch uh, 3400 by 1400p HDR monitor. Are they going to be able to support that on the X? I don't think they do the super wide aspect ratio, so that might be an issue, but I know that... If it's 2560 or, or any of that stuff by 1440, it should support it as long as it's through HDMI. So keep that in mind. Don't go out and buy a monitor for um, for uh, FreeSync, right? Don't go out and buy a monitor for FreeSync uh, without knowing that that's got to be supported over HDMI, not uh, DVI. So I, I really not a monitor guy. Honestly, I don't know too much about them, and that's about the most I can give you there. Anybody else know? No. Have no. no idea. All right, we'll go ahead and shoot us another question. You guys answer this one. All right. Ray Lobato wants to know, do we think that the Xbox One X is going to sell over $2 million this Christmas? What? I say no. Nope. <laughs> nope. I say a hell no, but that's just me. Fuck no. Hmm. I'm hey. not an analyst, so I'm not going to comment Let me ask Factor real quick. Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> for real. Like... Uh, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. It. We'll see. Like you, you can't really predict these things. So. All right. Well. Okay. Ray Lobato has another question. Then, what's your whole take on the Xbox One S bundles? Good or bad? Oh yeah, we we talked about that earlier in the show. If you guys missed it, of course, you can go back and check the video out when it re-uploads. Pretty cool. Uh, you buy a bundle. If the bundle comes with a game, you get three games and an Xbox One S for two hundred fifty bucks. I mean, that speaks for itself, right? Destiny yep. 2 included. So technically, there is a unofficial Destiny 2 bundle out there. Yeah, and it's funny. There's people in here asking questions, freaking out about the whole 920, 2017. Destiny's not going to be out till 920. You know, it's no, guys. Well, I, I, got, a, I got a message about that on, on Twitter where somebody said it was due to a glitch. But uh, explain what's actually going on there, Fonz. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I guess Colt was talking about it earlier, something to do with the um, Colt. Uh, what was it? Yeah, it, there was, it has to do with the bundle. If you bought bought some, you bought a bundle with the season pass or something, something like that. At the, on the Xbox store, it's just showing that uh, September 20th date, but that's not really the date. It'll so unlock. bottom line, you can play it tonight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good uh, because, you know what? I ain't going to lie, guys. Uh, it's been dry on pretty much every platform, even PlayStation up until Hell, uh, Hellblade and, and Lost Legacy came out. You know, I think the AAA, the AAA publishers just haven't put nothing out this year, Harley. You've got Mass Effect Andromeda, and then you've got, what else? I mean, you had Resident Evil, but that was forever ago. I mean, it's it's been really dry on the third party, uh, and, you know, most games don't hit till the fall on both sides. So I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm not a Destiny guy, but I'm going to fuck with it uh, for sure tonight, so... And, it is what it is. 
we had a guy uh, asking Darth Vicious. He wants to know, dealer, can you do more Bane impressions? They're instant classics. Oh, no, no, no. The one I did was pretty horrible after four hours of recording. So, no, I probably won't fuck with that anymore. But <laughs> but uh, that video was a lot of fun. We got a lot of good feedback on that video, me and Colt. If you haven't checked it, of course, it's up on the channel on the more recent videos on both of our channels. Uh, pretty fun. Pretty fun. Yeah, it was a great video, guys. Give us another one, Cole. Go and give us another one if you got one. All right. Uh, do you think the Xbox One X possible shortage in, in retail stores will hurt the sales or make people lose interest? Yes, I I do. I think there could be a shortage. And as a matter of fact, Aaron Greenberg agrees. He says that Xbox One X should sell out. Uh, Michael Pactor says that it will definitely outdo the Pro as much as Pactor is a turd. Uh, that's just his input on it as he's sitting on the toilet in front of his 1080p TVs. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Xbox One X, no matter how you want to spin it, the pre-orders are good. Uh, even if you want to compare it to something like a uh, quantity amount of something like the Nintendo Switch, that thing sold out pretty much around the same amount of time. I think, may, I don't remember, maybe a little longer actually, but it was 200 bucks cheaper. And, it, you you know, it's a new console. With the X, the only incentive is much better performance, better load times, and better graphics. You can still play all the games on the X that you can play on the S. So that kind of uh, means that there really aren't as many incentives to upgrade as there is of something like the Switch, even though, you know, as good as the game is going to look on the X. So you, give us, you guys get what I'm saying. The Nintendo Switch did a similar amount of time at a much cheaper price, and it's a whole new console where well, the X is just right. an upgrade, a phenomenal one, but an upgrade, and it still did that well at 500 bucks. Don't let anybody tell you differently. It's a good thing. It's good for the industry. It's good for Xbox. And there's going to be several, several hundred thousand consoles sold this November. Uh, I'd like to know what you guys think in the chat. How many do you think are going to sell November 7th throughout the rest of the month? What do you guys think on the panel? Oh, man. That's we're, a good one, huh? Pretty thoughtful. I'd say 250,000. Mm, I don't know about that. That's pretty low. Yeah. I mean, we we may be looking at two hundred fifty thousand Scorpios that sold anywhere from a hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand might be high, but I don't know. What do you guys think about the pre-orders? We have I no think idea. there's like seventy thousand, or f how many Game Stops are there in the U.S. Alone? Yes, you're right. Yeah, there's S seven seven thousand Game Stops. Seven thousand. I think that. I don't know. I ran that number. I can't pull those things out of my. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say worst case scenario, there's only 7,000 GameStops. Each I'll one had it. anywhere from 8 to 16 Scorpio editions, and they all sold out like within no time. I mean, 7,000 times 8 or 15, you're still you're looking at uh, quite a bit just there alone in the yeah, first 7, round of pre-orders. Yes, dealers, 7,000. And then, you know, you have uh, Best Buys, Targets, uh, the Amazon allotment, and one more store, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind. Of, that's kind. Of, I kind of did a, a number that was probably way far off. I think I said five hundred thousand in my video, but I think two hundred fifty sounds about right. But you have to kind of think what would Microsoft put out if they said, "Hey, we need to make these for pre-order." What What number do you guys want to manufacture? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I, I, the stores that I talked to, one guy gave me a really weird quote, and I think he meant something else. But uh, other places, him. other places that I've uh, I've talked to, they had about sixteen Scorpio editions. All of those sold out. If we take that and apply it to every GameStop alone, that's 112,000 consoles by itself in the first round of pre-order Scorpio editions. Jeez. There's going to be another round after that, and that's only one retailer, not counting Walmart, Target, Best Buy, all of these yes. places. So you're looking at close to half a million at the least, I would say. I'd say 500K. That's, that's my prediction. And that's It'll much more than people would have thought, you know. It'll yeah, stop yeah. the Pro, which, you know, I guess it was supposed to be the competitor to the Pro, right? The X. Well, that's what I'm hearing now in the comments. Oh, it's not it's my, not meant to compete with a Pro. Whatever. Your damage well, controlling. So. I'm, I'm still trying to get through the Barfarito boxes from Taco Bell to try and Diarrhea Simulator. Barfarito. That's that's all I've won is diarrhea. That's it. <laughs> You're constipated. That's why. <laughs> it's a great way to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go ahead and fast? Go ahead. Eat that no, I, on Twitter, I've seen quite a. Uh, I follow, you know, some um, some guys that are PS4 gamers, and I've heard them talk about going and buying that bar fox. So yeah, I mean, why not try and get a free one? I think that's a cool. That's mm -hmm. a cool. Uh, hey, the best thing about that combo is that blue Mountain Dew. 
Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. I like the way the boxes look, but personally, I would have at least put World's Most Powerful Console on the box. They don't really give you enough information. People look at it and like, what's an Xbox One X? You know, what is that? Uh, it doesn't really tell me why I need to take a look at it. It does, it does drive curiosity, though. That's an absolute fact. So maybe yeah. they'll Google it, but there, there needs to be more information on that box. The box looks good, and it probably even tastes better than that Barfarito. In there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look the outside of the box. <laughs> Dealer was in the back. Like power. Dealer's in the back of Taco Bell's writing his channel name on all his boxes. <laughs> yeah, 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 subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> you want to know what it is? Here you go. Uh, but yeah, guys. Hey, that's guys, been <laughs> I don't think that steak, I don't think that's steak in that barfarito either. I don't know what it is. It's dog. dog oh shit. Cool high five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, same yeah. link, buddy. Woof. We gotta give a shout out to D Batch joining us in the chat. He's been in there for a while, uh, with nunchucks. Yeah, he has him. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's that's been our hours. You guys know the show generally runs an hour. I'll say this again, as cringy as it is, if you if you happen to give a fuck, go ahead and check out the Patreon link down in the description below. Thanks for the support I already got. I just launched it, and I've already got uh, several awesome people that want to check it out and support the channel however they can. So thanks for the support. We're going to start with outros, uh, starting with Colt, bro. Where you been up to? Uh, where can people find you? You can find me at Colt Eastwood, all one word, on YouTube. You can find me on Xbox there as well. And I want to see some people Saturday morning playing with me. I'll be on there. New and I will probably be on. Maybe Dealer. Let's just get on and play some games. This, this is a lot more You fun. don't want to play some games. Fonzarelli, what are you been up to, bro? Where can people find you? Hey, man, you can find me at uh, on YouTube here, Everything According to Me, or on Twitter at jfonzarelli. Or you can find me in a Taco Bell bathroom throwing up this bar for reading. <laughs> you are the Asian albino midget, and you hang out in Taco Bell bathroom, so... You're kind of like that weird senator that would kick people's feet out of the stall. Uh, all day. <laughs> what are you been up to, bro? <laughs> Chilling, man. You guys can find me on Twitter at dbatch, um, Assassin's Creed, 1080p, 60 frames per second. You can find it there, guys. It's going to be great. No, no, you can find me at all day digital, um, all day underscore digital on Twitter, man. If you want to follow things petty, follow me. If you want to follow things. <laughs> All I'm right. Still- uh, if you want to follow things, follow All Day Digital on Twitter. Uh, Luca, what have you been up to? Where can people find you? I'm sure, I'm sure people want to know. Oh, uh, you guys can find me at, on Twitter at the Ashen Luca, and also on the Xbox Live at the Ashen Luca. And um, yeah, I had a, I had a lot of fun tonight, guys. You know, it's always good hanging out with you guys. And shout out to everyone in the chat. And also, I just want to say real quick, I hope everyone who's affected by the hurricane stays safe. Yes, very. Stay safe. Stay. I don't know how you would do that, but. I, I couldn't imagine going through something like that. So uh, we definitely, our, our, our well wishes go out towards those people. And, and thanks for supporting the podcast, guys. You guys are awesome. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. And I suppose uh, we're out. Yeah, thanks, mm-hmm. frauds and fans. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.